What's up you guys? It's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. So I get these questions about like healthcare experience and patient care experience and you know your virtual shadowing versus shadowing and just basically your experiences that are needed for CASPA because when you're applying to PA school you need experiences mainly direct patient care experience. And so it was asked, do these hours ever expire? And so that's what we're going to be answering in today's video. Doing my dance. Hey, I'm doing my dance. Don't mind me. I'm doing my dance. All right, what's up you guys? So, I have this question posed for me and I think it's a really relevant question because honestly, um, it is pretty important. You want to know if the hours that you are getting, if the hours you've gotten in the past will ever expire. And so this was asked by Andrew Perez and Andrew asked, great video, Adana. I'm a pre-PA student and all of your videos have helped a lot. Th oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I was wondering if patient care hours expire. I fall into the late 20s range and was an EMT for five years before returning to school. I'm no longer an EMT, but neither me or my advisors know if those five years can count towards my patient care hours. Thank you. Well, thanks for taking all the time to keep us informed. You are very welcomed, Andrea. And so, um, like I said, I believe that this is a very, very relevant question. Uh, it is important. And from all the research that I've done, um, the answers point to the fact that they it's like it's murky they don't expire but they do expire okay and so to to just help clear that up um i want to share my screen with you guys and i will show you exactly what i mean by it's a little bit murky i've gone to it's going to pop up on the screen like to my left um you guys is right but i've gone to caspa's website so if you haven't gone to caspa ever in your life um you need to because this is where you're going to be applying for, um to most of the pa schools most of the pa schools in the US ca are like they participate with CASPA okay so you have to put your application through CASPA and then you will send them to the various different schools. CASPA has a frequently asked questions section um, you can navigate through that I literally just googled CASPA in Google um, and then I went down to their frequently asked section. And then when you get there, you kind of just go down to filling out your CASPA application. And here you will go to supporting information because that is all of the additional information that you will need. You'll then click on experiences and then it gives you an overview of the various different experiences, what they mean, what they count um, for, um, some examples of those experiences and how to enter them. But um, I just wanted to go down to this part right here where it says, note that each that since each program's definition and requirements vary, CASPA has no specific preferences as to which category you choose. Now this is for all of your different experiences. And as I go down here, you can have non-healthcare experience, research, volunteer, patient care experience, and healthcare experience, as well as shadowing, okay? This is where like your virtual shadowing that you would get through the Get That C University virtual sh shadowing program that will be launching soon. Um, that's where you would put that information in, okay? So once you've gone through and you've seen what your actual experiences that you're going to um, enter in, then you can go back in there and make all of like the specific and necessary adjustments, okay? It says these categories are broadly based on feedback from various physician assistant programs and are not com a comprehensive list of every type of experience. So they wanna be clear that you can have other various different types of experiences, okay? That may not fall on the list that they've provided. It says if you have any questions, I'm jumping down to the next paragraph. If you have any questions about your experiences, fill, fulfilling, and individual programs, prerequisite requirements, contact that program directly. And I mean, obviously this is a little bit of like, I'm just covering myself, um, but it's true. I tell you guys this all the time. Like you can't just take my word from it for it, okay? I'm just a girl on YouTube talking about my experiences that I've had and some of the research that I've done, but you have to do your own research to ensure that you are getting the most up-to-date information. You come to me, you do some research, you, you know you subscribe to my channel you see okay this is what Adana says but go and verify this okay verify this information with the school and then just with our governing bodies 
So if you have any questions specifically about that, go to the school. But this is where, Andrew, your question is answered. It says, although you can enter any experiences that you believe are relevant to your application, we recommend focusing on those experiences within the last 10 years and at the collegiate level and above. Enter only current and in-progress experiences, not planned experiences, and check your program's require requirements regarding documentation. Okay, so that is that, all right? You know, you guys, you, you just heard it right there. They said that it's not that it's a requirement per se, but they suggest that you do this within the last 10 years, which makes sense, okay? Um, a lot of your actual prerequisite requirements in terms of the academic work, um, those like science courses, they expire at a max of 10 years. And so keeping that in mind, it would be like, it would be a essential and it would behoove you to actually allow your patient care experiences to kind of cover that same span. Now, this does not mean that you cannot enter it in because I'm a big, big believer in putting the information on there because you have the space to do it. So put the information in there and let the programs decide if you meet those, all if all of those hours meet the requirements, okay? For you, what you can do to just ensure that you're at least hitting the bar is ensure that, okay, if I did these courses five years ago, or if I did them, some of them 15 years ago, get, or have some of these hours, but they span into the 10 year mark, like some may have been like within seven years, some may have been within 10, some may have been within 15, put all of them, but know that when you're counting it, just to, just to be on the safe side, you're counting only from those that are 10 years and above. And then you can see, generally speaking, how many hours you have. And then from that, you can say, okay, well, overall, I may have like 20,000 hours of healthcare experience, but within the last 10 years, I have, you know, 8,000 or I have 12,000. And then you'll see exactly where you can line up with these programs. But again, verify, verify, verify call the programs, ask them um, if they have any requirements on if these hours expire or not, and if they don't, you're good to go. All right, hopefully this answered your question. Um, continue to leave me questions in the comments section, you guys. I read them, I comment on them, I make videos with them, um, and it really helps out uh, in terms of me getting more content out to you guys. Please subscribe to my channel. It helps my YouTube algorithm out a lot, a lot um, as I'm able to continue to make these videos for you. The more you subscribe, the more you like, the more I'm able to put out more content because um, YouTube will promote my video to others that aren't subscribed, okay? Um, follow me on Instagram at it on the PA. Do the same for Get That C University on Instagram at Get That C University. Um, and check us out on GetThatCUniversity.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. 